All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you see my my screen, and you will see my presentation uh, very soon. Um, I hope you see the, the right screen and not the presenter. Bad uh, thanks, Isang. Uh, all right. It's a, it's an honor to be here, and I want to thank the organizer um, Hugo Yusong and Nithya for taking interest to uh, to this paper and and inviting me here. So uh, this is um, the paper. Mass spectrogram inversion with stable pitch. It's a joint effort with my uh, with two co-authors, uh, Mark Levy and Richard Sharp. It's the paper that we um, submitted and presented at the ISMIA 22 conference. So let's get uh, right into it. Mass spectrogram is a low dimensional time frequency representation of audio that's derived from the power spectrogram. It is often used by speech generation model as a target space, which, however, it requires to invert the computation to obtain audio, which is a suitable task for machine learning. These models that do mass spectrogram inversion or spectrogram inversion, they are generally called vocoders. Recent mass spectrogram inversion models developed for speech achieve a, quite a high degree of realism. So it was um, natural to wonder how this model would perform on music. However, there are important differences between speech and music signals. In particular, um, with respect to speech, music signal usually has long, can have longer notes, can be polyphonic, and generally requires higher pitch precision. For these reasons, we um, set out to try and find and if we could design a mass spectrogram inversion model specifically for, for music. What is pitch stability? What I mean, so a pitched note is a periodic signal like the one that you see right now. In order to reconstruct a periodic signal like this with uh, pitch stability, a model needs to learn all the phase patterns and how to sequence them correctly. Errors in the sequence of phase patterns can be perceived as pitch instability. For example, like the uh, audio samples that you uh, hopefully will be listening right now. I'm not sure if uh, Zoom has um, the sufficient audio quality, but um, it's it's rather subtle. What you could have heard is a rather wobbly uh, pitch, a wobbly note, not like precisely, not perfectly stable. I'll play it once again. Also uh, for... Um, Maybe you're noticing here, you you might be thinking I should hear this as a glitch. Um, well, uh, let's let's just assume these frames are um, sequenced by using overlap and add. So actually these windows are um, cross-faded rather than just uh, just a, uh, just um, played one after the other. One more thing that's important to note at this point is that the input space, the melt spectrogram, is shift invariant for long sustained nodes like this, while the output, the target space, the time domain waveform, is non-shift invariant. What I mean by that is that if you move your window over time, uh, signal doesn't change for the mass spectrogram, while it, of course, it changes for the time domain waveform, except, of course, if you're uh, shifting of exactly one or an, a whole number of periods. This is particularly important because it's very hard for a stateless model like a convolutional neural network to be able to recover the uh, non-shift invariant domain from a shift invariant domain. 
looking a little bit into the related work, this is what's done in um, a couple of famous approaches like Melgan and Haifagan, where they try to go from the uh, Mel spectrogram, a uh, shift environment space, to the raw waveform, a non-shift environment space, using a stateless model like the convolutional neural network. It's very hard to reconstruct the information that's been lost, in this case, the, the phase, the, the sequence of phase patterns. But it could also be that when evaluating these models with speech, the artifacts that are generated are just less noticeable with speech uh, uh, compared to music. Other approaches like the WaveNet or WaveRNN, they use autoregressive. So in, theoretically, they should be able to learn the sequence of phases. But they are uh, a bit challenging to implement efficiently because they work on uh, sample by sample uh, resolution. And so uh, they are challenging to implement even more when using mass spectrogram as a conditioning signal. Finally, uh, rather recent work, this car gun, um, chunked autoregressive gun, is a generative adversarial network that has uh, the autoregressive mechanism and it works for frames of audio. So um, more efficient than uh, working on sample by sample. And um, in fact, the, the reason they added autoregressive nature to this um, um, otherwise convolutional architecture is to be able to reconstruct the phase. However, when uh, evaluated with music, when listening to music reconstruction, the quality is uh, still far from perfect, which kind of suggests that it's just really hard to learn the phase rotation with sufficient generalization just from data. So what we proposed in this paper is to change the target space and use a target space that's um, a shift environment. The target space here, it's, a, it's an intermediate target space. It's composed by the magnitude spectrogram uh, and the phase gradient spectrum. Uh, as you can see, the uh, this intermediate target space is shift invariant, so we can use a convolutional, a stateless model, a convolutional neural network, and that makes it very efficient because the network no longer needs to learn all the phase patterns and how to sequence them. The entire model, uh, the entire method architecture looks like this. We have a one-dimensional convolutional neural network that's used to estimate the magnitude and the phase gradient from a spectrogram. Then we have an integration stage that estimates the phase from the phase gradient. And finally, we recover the audio using inverse STFD. The general idea is that we factored signal processing domain knowledge out of, sorry, we factored the signal uh, processing domain knowledge out of the machine learning uh, part and into this integration stage. So there are many works that inspired us to experiment with phase gradient. I'm going to mention three of them. First one is GAN synth, where they use uh, as a target space the um, magnitude and the instantaneous frequency, which is one of the two components of the phase gradient. The um, this the GAN synth model is able to um, generate single notes conditioned on pitch plus a timbre latent vector. Another source of inspiration was the time frequency reassigned literature. Mm, this is a technique that uses the phase gradient, both components of the phase gradient, the derivative through time and derivative through frequency, in order to reassign, move a little bit the energy of each spectral bin in order to obtain a much clearer visual representation of a magnitude spectrogram. 
And I uh, still find quite fascinating how much clearer representation you can uh, you can get by analyzing the phase spectrogram. If you haven't seen this, um, if you have ever seen this picture before, it looks like this going from a normal spect a magnitude spectrogram to a time frequency reassigned um, spectrogram. You can see how um, more precisely you can you can see the frequencies of the of all the harmonics of this bass note. Finally, uh, some recent updates on the timescale modification literature. For example, this paper, Facebook order done right, where they propose this phase integration mechanism, which propagates phase either horizontally or vertically based on, uh, on the algorithm that, that they propose. And the fact that uh, they propagate phase on both uh, directions is an upgrade on the um, historical, you know, default phase create um, phase vocoder algorithm which just propagates phase horizontally we use a similar strategy propagating phases um, uh, horizontally and vertically in our model but it's uh, much simpler than uh, the one proposed in this paper we from our early experiment it um, sounded like working very well but um, we didn't compare them formally, so we left that uh, as, a, as a future work. All right, let's um, now look a little bit into the architecture of the uh, convolutional network that we use to estimate magnitude and phase gradient from the MEL spectrogram. The network is a fairly standard uh, convolutional neural network. We have seven layers of um convolution with um kernel of uh, three bins 1536 channels and ReLU nonlinearity the output chan the output layer of convolution uh, outputs three channels which are the magnitude and the two components of the phase gradient related to phase derivative through time and phase derivative through frequency we also have a residual connection from the input spectrogram to the output magnitude, uh, which is a, a very simple linear interpolation from the MEL bands to the linearly spaced uh, Fourier transform frequencies. We use a um, set of different losses to train this model. And these are our reconstruction loss on the magnitude spectrum. Another reconstruction loss that introduces some dependency uh, within vertical slices of the magnitude spectrogram by using the first 20 coefficients of the discrete cosine transform. We have two components that are um, related to the two components of the phase gradient. We use uh, one, uh, we, we train one of the two for sinusoidal bins and the other for impulsive bins. And finally, we have a reconstruction components of this uh, coefficient lambda that tells us if, if each spectral bin is either sinusoidal or impulsive. And it is a function of the two components of the phase gradient. Crucially, we have uh, no adversarial loss also compared to many of the models that we we are that are in the state of the art and we're comparing with um a little bit more detail on yeah the, this, this lambda coefficient is a function of the two um phase gradient components and it goes from zero to one um Ideally, it's one for perfectly sinusoidal bins and zero for perfectly impulsive bins, and uh, it's a, of course it's a differential uh, differentiable function of these two components. So this is why we can back propagate through it. Um, yeah, it can have uh, any value between zero and one, and lambda will also be used during integration during phase integration, as, as you will see in a minute. 
Yeah, so the uh, phase integration stage that uh, allows us to estimate the phase from phase gradient is a non-learned stage, is a purely um, signal processing stage. And what it does, it's, um, it's, it propagate phase horizontally for sinusoidal bins, meaning if lambda is greater than that constant lambda s, um, it's kind of a configuration constant. And we propagate the phase vertically for impulsive bins. Um, in between these two, co this two uh, constants, lambda s and lambda i, uh, if it's neither, we s just uh, randomize the phase, which is shown to, um, to obtain kind of a, a more natural sound rather than treating each bin as either sinusoidal or impulsive. We trained our network with 13 hours of ambient music loops from commercial libraries using one channel at uh, 44, 100 hertz. You, we used this frame size and hop size, uh, twin, uh, 2048 as a frame size and 256 as a hop size and 96 bands MEL spectrogram. Um, all, all the models that we compared with are trained um, with, the, with the same data. So in order to ev uh, evaluate the pitch stability, we synthesized 2,000 one second notes and chords from MIDI to audio using different uh, sound fonts and different instruments. Uh, and we then compared the original and the reconstructed audio using this harmonic error metric that allowed us to evaluate uh, the, the pitch stability. The harmonic error matrix works pretty much like this. It's a distant function between the spectral peaks that are related to either the fundamental or uh, the first and harmonics of all the nodes that are contained in the audio signal. So for example, imagine you have a B and an F sharp in this signal, you just find the spectral peaks for each frame that are related to um, any fundamental or harmonic of these two nodes. And then you compute the differences uh, between the distances between these peaks. The distant function works in a log frequency space, which is actually um, the space of semitones. We compared with uh, several different models, some of which we have mentioned previously, uh, Mergen, Kagan, and Haifagan. Griffin Lim is a purely signal processing iterative method to reconstruct phase, and uh, diff wave uh, is a method that uses the diffusion process. Our phase gradient model um, seems to obtain the lowest mean harmonic error than the other models that we compared with over the entire range of pitch, particularly so in the low range where the nodes have a longer waveform period. So uh, it's it's harder to harder to learn and harder to learn how to sequence. It's also interesting uh, to to visualize the reconstructions as time frequency reassigned spectrogram because I think they give uh, quite a quite a nice visual representation of the stability of the fundamental and the harmonics of all the reconstructed signals. We didn't just compare the, the different models on monophonic texture. We also looked at polyphonic texture like, the, like in, the, in the figure, in the plot that you see in the bottom left. For example, here we tried with zero represents just the monophonic one note signals. Zero and 12 means we tried for one octave. Zero and 16 is um, um, 
major 12th. Um, the major 10th, sorry. Uh, zero 07 is a perfect fifth. Uh, the perfect fifth and octave, etc. You have this is the open voicing major triad, uh, closed voicing major triad, and and closed voicing major seventh chord. You can see that um, going from the simplest intervals to uh, open voicing and closed voicing, the margin of of improvements of the phase gradient model gets uh, less uh, gets lower. Uh, one possible answer, one possible reason for that is that we are actually for the closed voicing hitting a ceiling of what the frequency resolution of the input representation of the mass spectrogram uh, allows to infer. We also um, used other metrics to compare the overall reconstruction quality, not just the pitch stability. Uh, in particular, we extracted the free share audio distance on different data sets. And we also run a listening test to evaluate the pitch stability. And uh, we computed the speed in terms of the real time factor, which says how many seconds of audio you can. Uh, reconstruct in one second and uh, the count of param of the network parameters as a proxy for capacity. Um, as you can see from the fresh air audio distance for these three data sets, our phase gradient models performs in, in line with the best performing models and it's also quite significantly the more stable model, the model with the better pitch stability as perceived from the uh, listening test. Um, you can, uh, I think in the paper, I've, um, I've added some of my uh, very subjective impression of um, the reconstruction by, by, the, by this model. So, uh, please, uh, you're welcome to have a look at that if you're curious. Finally, let's have a listen to um, some reconstructions using uh, the, all the different models plus the phase gradient model. And that's it. Um, thank you very much for your attention.